Okay. Welcome back, one and all. So, we're doing something a little bit different than normal. Alright, so Dave was a big meanie, and by a big meanie I mean like really awesome. Because he told it to me straight. And gave me an opportunity to de-fucking stress. Significantly. Between work and freaking out over the Christmas season, because I'm actually going to be doing something for a person, persons, things are happening. Work is picking up. I have a massive fucking backlog of things to take care of that I own. So, to be quite honest, I am overloaded, and I am damn stressed. So, he gave me the option to send back a good bit of the stuff, and I'm taking that option. That way, I can focus on the things I have selected. And it's not for lack of appreciation to David at all. It could not be further from the truth. I have nothing but respect, love, and adoration for the sheer kindness of that man and the fact that he told it to me straight after recognizing how stressed out I have been. But I'm going to use this as a challenge also, uh, sorry for the fan. It honestly got hot in here from the last recording, and I just, I, I can't do it. Sorry. So, there's going to be really obnoxious fan noise, and hopefully the music in the background is loud enough to overcome it. And I'm going to do my very best to speak over it as much as possible. Now, back onto the matters. That, uh, matter. I'm going to be doing a mega demi-review of... Pretty much every single bloody thing that man has sent my way. And I will be returning it to him in bulk. And here's how it's going to work. You can jump in the Discord. Or if you really don't use Discord, and I understand, you can also use the comments section. Ask me to ask him once I've cleared out more of the things that are actually mine to have him send back over where possible some of these pieces of equipment so that I may do a deep dive review as per my norm. Okay? Awesome. So without further ado, let's start off with one of his prides and joy. These are the T50RP Mark III Mayflower Mods. Mayflower Mod. Modded cans. With the ZMF Pilot Pad and I believe ZMF Angled Pads. God, these feel so good. But man, I wish they were hybrid. Whew, God. Th these pads do not help hide the outstandingly ostentatious levels of treble but they do isolate really well and they really help to solidify the mids and the highs and they help to present a better more well separated sound that just open enough that they allow for a very cohesive sound but they're also just isolating enough and, and closed enough that they also assist in just a better bass thump in general. Uh, he put the cotton batting in there as well as the putty and foam, I believe. Vibrational dampening. And they have a very reasonable low end. Uh, his review of them, I would honestly say, is pretty damn spot on. So, if I can remember, I'll link that in the description Beep. below. I guess, below for me, 
probably down there for you. Yeah, I'm a smart boy. But these are very comfortable. They sound very good. They're very intense, very engaging, very personal. But to that end, I don't hate it, but it's not my preferred signature. So I don't like it either. Would I recommend that mod? Um, considering you can tweak it along the way, I could see, honestly, if you look up what that mod is specifically trying to target, then yes, I would say that that particular kit may very much be worth it. But these ZMF pads and shit? Oh god, yes. Oh, fun fact. The pilot pad does fit on the HE4XX and like many other headphones. So if you're wanting to add legitimate comfort, uh, it... I think the guy that runs ZMF, Zach, right? Zach, dude, if you ever just watch my videos, I highly fucking doubt it. But Zach, bro. Zachamo, my dude, the ZMF wonder. Do away with this Velcro shit. Unless you're going to make the really angry, snippy snappy kind. Like the command ones that 3M has, where it's plastic on plastic and it just pops. Go instead. Charge people like another five, ten dollars maybe. Okay, honestly, maybe a little bit more. And go for really hella strong, but thin. Neodymium magnet points, and just let it snap there on its own, nice and simple and happy. Alternatively, put a little bit of stretchy material here at the end, and put a angerous zipper with a little flap that goes up, not down, up. That Velcro's into place to cover the zipper. And you would have one of the best fucking pads in the market for head fo uh, for headbands. I mean, it's really good now, but th this thing just, it wants to travel. And uh, this Velcro solution is not great. Uh, I, I hate it. I, I do not like this type of Velcro that's unoffensive to the body. Like, it's non-scratchy to the skin, really. But it's... It's a fair price, honestly, and I could probably do these modifications I'm talking about easily on my own. I know how to use a sewing machine. Yes, I know how to use a... Sh Shut up! I know how to use a sewing machine. Of course I do. I could probably do it on my own, but I'm lazy, and I don't have a lot of time, so I'd much rather pay someone else to do it. That's my recommendation to you. These pads, though, Broham, oh, God, yes. Done good. Yeah, easy. Back to the actual headphone mod. Uh, the Mayflowers are fun. Uh, kind of a get-to-work sort of sound. Uh, very bright. Um... Uh, Almost analytically so. Not clinical. It's not dry. Not very dry. Not like uh, HD 599 dry. But it's not lush and warm like my Fuzzageddon or the 6XX with Yaxi pads. Yes. I have Yaxi pads. They make Yaxi pads. I probably should have shown this off in the prior video. Oh well. Yeah. The most comfortable shit ever. They don't feel like they'd be comfy, but somehow they're ultra comfy and they're wider than the Dakoni premium sheepskins. On second thought, I think I may have been putting them on backwards. I think I might be mildly retarded. That definitely looks like it's thicker in one area. Shit, I'm gonna have to try them again. That's probably why I didn't like them. Uh, yeah, Yaxi pad, uh, Yaxi pads, people, uh, make some for my Cost 95X, please. And some general use ones, please. Like those specific ones, please. Pretty please. Pretty please with sugar tits on top. It's a candy treat. Well, back in, anyway. Not my preferred signature. Don't hate it. Don't like it. But don't hate it. Dave really likes them, and I'm glad he does. He's put a lot of effort into them. Uh, 
that just, it's a good, damn decent mod. It's just not to my tastes. But man, that, that Edo's comfort really well. Good job. Uh, nice cable that he'd chosen as well. I, I just, I, I couldn't give these that much of a listen. Not for lack of power, but for lack of... God, that signature is just not my thing. It gets shouty for me. It's too much of some of the stuff that he happens to like. I like headphones that make it sound like there's a subwoofer in my skull. Go figure, right? So... Let's just naturally move that on to... Hi-Fi Man Mega Mini and the FIOA 5. Damn good dap. Uh, not as quiet or as transparent sounding, but from what I understand, it also is not terribly expensive, although nowadays, as of recent months, there are better options than the Mega Mini, substantially so. Uh, the UI I do not like in any way, shape, or form. The KNN3? Way, way, so very better. And then I found out after the fact that, yeah, oh no, it, it totally actually is better. It's not just me. Eh, go figure. But it doesn't sound bad. I wouldn't put very efficient uh, IEMs on it, as there is a bit of noise. There is no internal ROM, so you will be stuck off of micro SD cards. This on its own can make sound happen on a T50 mod. On my Fuzzageddon, using those wonderful pads that David had given me, it does a good job. Dry, but it does a good job. I'm not really qualified to talk about the dynamics or the, the DAC or any... I have a hard time really delineating some s very specific stuff on little things like this that I don't use or can't use with other things to very much analyze them properly. See what I mean? I can't be thorough on this because it doesn't really allow me to be. Not bad, not great. Better options out there, but if you have it, keep it for a little bit longer. Uh, really low battery life. Really, 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 really low battery life. Horribly low battery life. So if you're wanting to upgrade, there are better options, unfortunately. But the Theo A5. Okay, so, as a quick warning... I'm about to go into a really massive rant sometime here really soon about a thing with portable amplifiers. So I do hope you will tolerate my being extra specially pissy, but I'm really not going to take away my thoughts or opinions in this particular regard because I feel they are just, and quite frankly, these are my opinions. I mean, it's my show, my opinions, so on and so forth, but, uh, yeah, I'm about to get angerous up in here, so you are warned. The high and low gain is a nice rocker switch with a peg. Maybe not rocker switch, that's the wrong word. Um. Uh, just your standard single stage switch. Or single state switch. That way, that way, that way, that way. It's got a nice little stick. And, yeah, the high gain is high gain. The low gain is kind of like medium gain, really. The on is right here. And now it's on. You get a light. Oh, look, it's on. And that goes that far. Uh, the base booster is reasonable, but it can muddy things up pretty easily. It's not the best base boosting feature that I've ever heard of, to be absolutely honest. The anti-scuff pads, or the anti-slip pads, it comes with. Not bad. Uh, these are actually doubled up. They are kind of slick on one side, so that may have been intentional. Or maybe it was meant to grip more onto a cell phone surface, I don't know. 
I know is when you have proper tension, it don't move. Uh, the bridge cable here is not bad at all, uh, although I wish it was... I don't know, maybe different, maybe a, a different design. It just seems to get to the way where the headphone jack is, and it, it's just stuff here is not placed optimally or as intelligently as it could have been. I much rather would have seen this scooched over a bit and this moved over here with more of a, a switch like this. Or maybe one where you have to press in and then move it so that it doesn't just jank all on its own. And speaking of these volume knobs, the hell is wrong with you fucking companies? Seriously, Theo, uh, Topping, all of you that have either a rotary digital encoder or a normal volume pot? Why is it like this? Why is there no safety built into this shit so you don't blow your goddamn eardrums out? What the fuck is wrong with you people? I know I got heated over that, and that seems really simple to some people, but I work and move cylinders as tall as me, almost, and ab about as heavy as me, almost. I move big shit around. And having this thing being able to freely do whatever the fuck it wants is really goddamn annoying. What saves my DX160 is the case. It really guards it. it. I have to really try to move it. I have to do it with not purpose, but intent. This is stupid. There should be a very simple magnetic system similar to how uh, the mech mods work for vaping. Magnets. You push down, it engages gears, and oh look, I can adjust it now. Something. Maybe a momentary clicky switch to engage the gears to allow it to move. And then when you disengage the clicky, it breaks and holds, not breaks, as in snaps, but it, it arrests this and stops it from moving so that you don't lose your delineation unless it's a digital encoder, in which case it doesn't matter. This is unfucking acceptable in my book, and I understand this doesn't bother a lot of people. But if you have really sensitive IEMs, almost no hiss on this, by the way, that becomes a problem. And it's stupid, and it's very easily mitigated, but they're too damn lazy. Stop it. I mean, hell, even the DX160 allows for software adjustment of that knob to where those buttons don't work when the screen is locked. They're intelligent. They have a customer for life. Theo? The more stuff I have used of yours... Yes, it's enjoyable, but the more I just get pissed at the lack of give a shit. Battery life on this, however, is sub friggin stanchial. Takes a good while to charge, though. Really kind of disappointing. But uh, it's a reasonable price from what I recall. Yeah, if you're looking to just straight up get an amp to amp things, uh, yeah, it's not bad at all. A very reasonable noise floor from what I've experienced thus far. The pot feels very nice. The gain switch is is actually pretty resistive to change unless there's just something that fits in this groove and just moves it perfectly. It's a bit cramped, and like I said, it, things need to be relocated. It's not a bad unit, but it's... The, the things I'm harping on are things that I would harp on on just about anything that has it. The tension rings it comes with. No, I'm not calling them cock rings. That's Zeus's thing. But the tension rings that it comes with. It comes with uh, two, maybe three sizes. Two pairs each. Or a pair each. They're pretty useful. Really nice. and all. You know, it, they work. They work really well. It's not a bad little hemp. Not at all. Especially if you happen to really like the DAC of something and you just want more oomph from it, then yes, it'll do that job spectacularly well. Although I would 
at that point suggest something maybe for OTG, a DAC use, rather than just headphone. Because most phones don't have a line-out option, whereas like my DX160 from my Beso does have a line-out option. Yeah, I could give it a go. Honestly, all that stupid shit aside, it, it, it's honestly a damn decent little portable amplifier. They're probably better for the money, but it's not a bad unit. Let's save those for last. I Beso IT01. These are relatively well used. So there's a bit more driver flex than normal. If driver flex really bothers you, you may need to avoid them. Uh, it doesn't honestly bother me at all because I'm not constantly fucking with them when they're in my ears. Go figure. I've looked at multiple frequency response graphs and the response levels are... It's really balanced. Not 100% neutral, but it seems to walk the tightrope between balanced and neutral. The imaging on it is, is pretty damn reasonable for $100. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Even matching up against some of the, the latest chi-fi, I still think that it sounds damn fine. Not great, but damn fine. Very satisfying bass response. And when I say bass, I'm talking from about 150 hertz and below. Ideally, 120 hertz and below. Specifically, and what I mean is, is my target region that I really want some extra oomph and thump in is about 100 hertz down. 120 hertz down for just a broad EQ sounds great. The true bass on the Zendak seems to handle about 100 and... 180 maybe up to 200 but i would say it really starts becoming becoming noticeable at about 180 decibels and below and it just ascends this doesn't need any bass boosting it's just fine the mids are very well translated the highs it not extensively high reaching but very clear it's all relatively fast the imaging really isn't bad at all, but because of the more leaning, neutral sort of uh, tonality to it, it straddles the line of neutral and balanced, I had said. Those are kind of different things. A balanced sound is where everything has... sounds like it has an equal representation. But these in some songs will sound very balanced. These in some songs will sound very neutral, which means the mids come up a bit more because we naturally hear the mid frequencies. Physiologically speaking, even psychologically speaking, we hear them better. That's why I like such an elevated bass. Well, that and other extenuating circumstances we shan't get into at this particular time. But the bass is harder to hear the lower it goes, and I like the feel, the tactility. Thumpy, thumpy. Uh, the treble, once it gets high enough, it stops becoming a sound and more of a sensation for me. And these have a nice bit of sensation to them all throughout the gamut, but it's very tactile-free, except for very pounding bass, or very fast thumps or pops or bumps in the mid-range, like with some electronic music. All in all, these handle basically everything I put them against, and I didn't want to tear my earballs out from my skull box. The cable it comes with is honestly pretty reasonable. It's uh, The P1's cable is very reminiscent of it, although this feels like there was a bit more attention paid to it. The jack is eh, not very chintzy and light feeling, so they put a bit of oomph in there. There's some brass or copper in there to weigh down this aluminum sheathing. The anti-tangler while I wrap it up, uh, yes, that is its new technical name, and if you say it is a chin strap, I will probably call you a fool and wrong, or just wrong. Because I don't, you know, like correcting people like a dick. It's like, don't you mean this? Asterisk. Fucking assholes. Uh, right, tangent. Sorry! Uh, reasonable length. Uh, where this fails for me is comfort. 
The body design is actually pretty damn comfy. The nozzle design is too big. This hurts my ear with extended listen listening sessions with these foamies. Using some silicones, I could go a lot longer listening to them. The overall signature is not very fatiguing. I believe I had mentioned that the imaging is pretty good. The stage is very intimate, uh, but that can also be highly dependent upon the recording you're listening to. You can, in fact, on the most closed, intimate sounding thing, make them sound just a bit wider due to how you record it and mix it and master it. Sorry, you may not believe me, just like some people don't believe me about cables. Eat shit. I'm not going to lie to you. I will tell you exactly how I feel. Am I right or wrong in an empirical sense? Well, that's semantics, but we'll just say I'm giving you the empirical facts as I understand them. The whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you Bob. But quite nice. Uh, would I buy them for a hundred dollars right now? You know, nah, maybe. They kind of get the go. Because they they don't sound bad. They don't sound fatiguing. They, the cable is honestly really reasonable. It, I, There wasn't a very massive market improvement whenever I put on better cables. The comfort's a bit lacking, but uh, yeah, I, I might, honestly. If I wasn't enamored and in love with some of the other devices that I currently have, when I first got these in, I actually genuinely enjoyed them. I just had to find the right tip to put on them, and yeah, then I was pretty happy. Yeah, these get the go. They're pretty damn good. Uh, the case they come with is really nice. I wish it was a screw-on, but it's uh, just a push-top. Tons of tips. Yeah, good job, I be so. Good damn job. These are the Biodynamic Soulbirds. Okay, so there's a word that comes to mind with these. Specifically, these. Musical. Yeah, just tiny and musical. At first, they were going to get the flying go, because everything I put them on with these weird-ass cone tips, I don't know how or why they seal. All I know is they seal. And they're they're pretty stout, and they're not coming out. But they get the go. Kind of. If you can find these used for about 50 bucks, yeah, easy. Very easy peasy. Because you will probably need to mod them to get them off of an attached wire for almost a hundred dollars. Bayer Dynamic, you retarded twat waffles. I don't even care if this puts me off of your list of potential reviewers. I'll buy your shit and shit on it if I want, and I damn well please. <laughs> Bayer die fucking Namek. You... As good as these sound, you do not ever, for any reason, shape or form, and I will dock every single company that does this, sell any in-ear monitor or any headphone that even begins to touch the $80 to $100 region without a replaceable fucking cable, bar none, period. We are not negotiating this. I'm sorry if you don't agree. No. This is 2019 on the cusp, the ending waning part of the year before 2020. We're working on quantum fucking computers. We're figuring out theoretical quantum mechan- uh, We're working on quantum mechanics. We're applying the theories. We're trying to figure out more theories. We're working in physics. We're working with new biological sciences. We're testing out new things in the audio world in China. China's Hedfi, Hedfi group. Uh, they're little cult of people, as far as I can tell. They're probably a cult because they seem to be the most level-headed bastards around. They give a shit. They care. They're reasonable in price. Bayer Dynamic, you are filled with assholes. Assholes that make very good-sounding product that no matter what I put it on, it was very musical. Generically musical. Uh, this is a 
big ass demi review video set thing. At 50 bucks, maybe even 60, I could say, yeah, brand new used, get them. No problem. Expect to mod them. I don't know how you're going to get in there, but you'll have to figure it out. Because once this cable goes to shit, you don't even get to buy their overpriced cable that I'm sure that they're willing to sell you. No, you have to buy a new set of IEMs or figure out how to modify them. We have all this wonderful science, and still, companies are allowed to thrive and flourish with retarded mentalities and stupid ideals that should be punished, in my honest, personally brutal opinion. Unacceptable. But for the sheer fact of how they sound and how they fit, like an M&M &M with a nozzle and a tip for your ear, they sound really damn good. From what little time I spent with them, the imaging was very, very reasonably good. Uh, the spatial awareness, the stage, was highly mixed dependent as most IEMs are. Uh, but not tiny, not ultra intimate, but I, I want to say somewhat intimate. Nevertheless, still somewhat intimate. They don't sound bad. They sound good. They are ultra comfortable. If you can get over the fact that it doesn't give you the sensation of, hey, yo, I'm in your ear. Don't worry, Bubby. I ain't going nowhere. You lose that sensation. That that, and I've tried other tips. So has David. The, uh, the only tip I could think of that worked, were, and Shazi, please, Shazi, please, please, Shazi, Shazi, please, let me buy all of your tips, all of them, like a lot, and I will love you long time with mouth. What does that entail? Hell, I don't know, and I don't care, but I will love you long time with mouth. The Shawzi tips. The ones I use on my tapes, they're mushy silicones. They opened these up. The only word I could think of was open. The highs became more Bayer Dynamic esque. They were sharp, and they were semi piercing, but not not even offensively, it's just it made those frequencies very apparent, and I'm quite positive people can actually hear up to those really high ranges, but every headphone company under the red sun and blue moon decides to EQ that shit into non-fucking-existence. But it became very open, very apparent. The stage was noticeably increased. And I will be sending some spare tips, I think with them to David. In fact, he's going to be doing, uh, he's going to be getting my Shawzi form 1.1s. I'm not sure how I feel about them, and I honestly want him to review them first. One is a thank you. Two, I don't know how I feel about him, and I trust his ears. We don't agree on signatures very much uh, in terms of personal tastes, and we don't all always hear the very, very same things, but we tend to agree pretty well. He has very well-trained ears, and I just have sensitive hearing. Even though I blast them with volume, I can pick up some things that I, I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I just, my brain works in weird ways. When there's too much pollution and sound, yeah, just too much sound around, I, I can't delineate things. But these things don't do that. And when I added those tips, they opened up and it was like any other time in my life. Oh, look, there's a straw snapping, you know, from the other side of the restaurant I used to work at. I would immediately walk over here. Here's a new straw. Oh, it's fine. No, you snapped it, kid. Did I? Yeah, go ahead. Try it. Sure enough, yeah, it was snapped. In a busy restaurant filled with people, I could pick that out. I don't understand. There are things in here, and this thing contains details like that once I swapped the tips. Little straw snapping in the other side of the room. Details. Not super granular in the good way. Not super... Fine, uh, the very finite. 
they don't do micro details very, very well. But to go from a very ostentatiously musical sound, and that's the only way to describe it, to almost more analytical in a fun way, if you could get these used, or hell, even pay 180 to to $100 for them to be pre-modded for you, two-pin is what I would suggest, but MMCX might work better, yeah, I could see that being a pretty damn good option. Nice little love-hate relationship. Why, Bea? Okay. These. So, in a wee bit, I'm going to be using a dedicated audio recording program on my cell phone, and I'm going to be recording a snippet of audio. So, when or if more than likely the video feed cuts out and all you hear, to, hear is sound, that is intentional. Highly intentional. Because I didn't hear the difference in mic when uh, David had done this. So I am going to do it the way I understand how doing it to work. He was using OTG cables, dongle DACs. I'm going to actually be using straight up the phone's headphone jack. Take that as it may, however you wish. This is a test of me talking to the cell phone, aiming my voice down. The cell phone is approximately a foot away from my mouth in reference to the microphones. I am speaking at normal volume. This is with background music on. This is me speaking normally or even a bit more elevated and more fun in having <laughs> angry moments. Now I will kick the fan on. This is me rummaging around in my room with music in the background and a fan blowing at my back. I'm recording in stereo flak. 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. Yeah, my phone does that. It's pretty baller. So, we'll be right back and we'll listen to the sounds of Nismo. You know, it helps if you actually, like, unmute the fucking microphone. Okay. This is a test of the Nismo Jr. It is recording in mono flak 24 bit 192 kilohertz. I am speaking at a normal talking volume. I am speaking in an excited <laughs> volume. Uh, yeah, I'm probably going to have to tune that down a little bit. Um, I could see something like this happening a lot, uh, just in general, due to the isolation of them. I am now angling the microphone more towards my mouth, and this is a quick test of the mic, so sorry for the rubby sounds. Okay, yes. Other than the fact that my phone is telling me it's mono, we definitely know it's getting sound from the microphone. It is up against my beard fuzz. And we're going to pause and come back with... Here's the music. And then I will come back with my fan. And we're back with some background noise. Uh, there is a little bit of music playing. So it's definitely picking up some of the background noise. Uh, I don't know if it's picking up the sound from my fan at all. So I will review this and add it in. Back to you. What is now literally past me. Peace. So, these. Not very friggin' musical at all. Can you listen to music on them? Uh can I take a sip of my drink? Yes. Oh god, that's good caffeine. Can I take a hit off of my beautiful, oh, beautiful vape? Yes. Yes, I can. 
Those of you that just got that reference, congratulations, you're as old as I am. Or you had very good parents. Can you listen to music on them? Yes, most definitely. These are geared for literally gaming. Literally gaming. And I was playing Battlefield 5, and you know what? In a weird way, they were keeping up with my HD 599s and my HD 6XX. In a weird way. The position, the, the, the tracking, the imaging was... Um, okay, so these are $30. Three zero US dollars. For thirty dollars, we're lowering the scale a little here. Uh, but the imaging was spectacular, stellar, even. Yes, stellar is the word I am using. And looking at this design, seriously, you can get this shit on AliExpress easy peasy. But they stayed in. They were relatively comfy for a long playing session. They really were. The mic I doubt would work really well, but this might be a great mobile solution, to be honest with you. Although the mic might not work. Really depends on your OTG cable if it is actually compatible with a tripole. TRRS. I guess it's a quad pole. Yes, quad pole, not tripole. Excuse me. I misspoke. And I can even forgive the attached wire as much as that sucks. It's 30 fucking dollars. I'm not going to complain about an attached wire on $30. Not when this thing is so huge and I can easily, easily open this up and modify things. The base is extremely impactful. Uh, let me take that back. Not extremely impactful. But for $30, it's extremely impactful. It's a very fun, very apparent. Explosions have depth and entertainment value these are tuned for fps games for f fucking sure the mids specifically were most voices particularly male voices and some female voices are tuned to be to my ears at least with these foamy tips that i believe they come with are tuned to be very 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 forward not annoyingly but they're very apparent. Comms comes through super clear. Little tippy taps, little tippy 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 tappy tippy tabbies come through very clear. You hear a grenade? Clink, 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 clink. I know where that some bitch is, and if I can make it, I'm throwing it. If not, I'm hauling ass, Bubby. Yeah, I actually like these for games. Straight up. Are there better options? Yeah, my uh, ESP95X. Oh, shit, nothing beats them. No, nothing. Sorry, I don't care. I, I don't care. Nothing beats them. They sound so much bigger than they actually are. But this for $30? Uh... Yeah. Um, nice little metal boom mic. Keeps position really well. You get the little cushy here that you can just rub a band into place. Little uh, pop filter. His uh, yes, pop filter. There's another word for it, but I can't remember. Uh, yeah, uh, these totally get the go if you're looking to try out an on-the-go kind of. gaming headset. Uh, you've got your little activator button here for your one button control. I believe that is a mic mute. I believe that is also a mic down there, a little itty bitty hole, and a volume slider. If you... I suggest just set it up in the highest position and just never touch it again. Seriously, never touch it again. Uh, because once that slider gets dirty or corroded or what have you, that's it, buddy. Shit, you're done. Either open it up and try and replace it or clean it, or just buy a new set. Honestly. Use the old set to modify and turn them into, uh, something different. And, uh, the coolest part is that I think is really, really, really cool. This mic comes off, right? It's just a two and a half mil mono. 
You could put an antlion mod mic on there. Easy. And with this little spacing here, you could easily find little hoops to go up and around your ear. Or little hooks to go in your ear. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are awesome. I, I think they're honestly underrated. I think they're not stellar for gaming, but spectacular for their cost versus performance. The value proposition here is, I would say, if you like to game and you need to have an oh shit set just laying around, make these them. Yeah, seriously, make these them. That's what I think about them. They handle music okay. I was actually playing Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. Uh, don't judge me. I only bought it because, uh, on the Epic Store anyway, because I thought another friend had got it. No, they were talking about Modern Warfare. Not Mech Warrior. I forgot COD exists still. So, shit. Sue me, I guess. Oh, bugger me. I don't know where that video made the new clip at. Okay, so if there's a weird bit in editing, that's why. All right. I think that is the bulk of it. I'm going to go ahead and add the sound test in. I believe that's all of the gear. Uh, yes, there is a set missing. There uh, are things going on with that. Good stuff. Thank you, David. Uh, I don't know if I will personally need or want any of these back for a more extensive review. Possibly the Soulbirds, if they weren't so agitating. But... Otherwise, it's up to my viewers. You may go to the suggestion tab inside of the Discord and specifically mention from the Mega Demi review video of David's swag. This is what I would like you to do a deep dive on. Keep it all one post. Slow mode is enabled. No, that's not a general place for chatting. Yes, I actively delete shit from there. I don't care how helpful it is. I will delete shit from there actively because I get a ping off of that actively okay or use the comment section in the video below I will do my best to remember to link to David's channel down below wonderful stand-up guy he's got plenty more subs than I keep going bud. you can do it I'm going to be slow and steady I want to deep dive everything, and the shower tapes, when I get to that review, and that will be relatively soon, I believe, there are going to be some huge caveats on that, in the best way possible. Please look forward to that review. I may even pair it with the 95X, either immediately in a video following it, or in the same video. There are some, there is truly some good, cool, awesome shit coming out that has already been released to the public to purchase. So, thank you for joining me, one and all. David, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much for helping to take the stress away from me being a boar headed jackass. And helping me to realize what my limitations are and being so very kind about it and letting me hold on to this for so, so very long. I, it was honestly depressing me. Actual real depression to be stuck with so much and still be buying some of my own gear because not only am I trying to keep up in the YouTube space, I'm also trying to cater to my viewers. I'm also trying to cater to myself. And I wanted to make them worth it. I didn't want to just do a half-assed review. Even though this is a big Demi review. And I didn't do a deep dive on these. On any of these devices. I still tried to put as much soul into it as, as I could. I actually care about the fact that I have hold... Uh, held on to these as long as I have and that you have been wonderful about it th throughout it 
Thank you so much for everything, for all of these opportunities, all of these new experiences. You... Thank you. I totally forgot. <clears throat> he also sent the iFi audio optimizer. I did use it in a few cases to help attenuate the audio, but uh, to be honest, it... I don't believe that. It was doing the funky chicken dance with the highs and some of the lows. Uh... I don't know. Something about it. it. It just... It was making things sound funky. David says the better model, the higher end, the step up, does a lot better of a job. And I'm inclined to believe that. Uh, I would not get this unless you absolutely need an attenuator. And I would say this is probably one of the better, cheaper attenuators out there. Uh, but I would not personally get it. So... There we go. That's it for today, children. Thank you all so much for stopping by. Have a wonderful morning, a beautiful afternoon, a lovely evening. Corvadago says the same. May you have the most exciting dreams and travel far and wide within the realm of your dreamscape. So long as it leads you back to me. Your favorite, the great wizard fossil. You're come on back now, you hear? And peace.